It was a sunny late afternoon when we visited Old Howard Beach. You wouldn't expect the streets to flood, but the restless water of Jamaica Bay found its way through storm drains and onto the blacktop. The high tide brought with it some unexpected visitors, small bait fish going for a swim on city streets. We stuck around to watch the water as twilight turned to nightlight. I've heard a lot of stories from residents. It's either due to old infrastructure or storm drains just getting really clogged up. Helen Cheng has heard many accounts from locals as to exactly why flooding happens in the city's waterfront communities. Her job now is to collect flood data that will help the government figure out what's causing it and how to fix it. The Jamaica Bay Community Flood Watch Program is a program that uses community citizen science to document uh, flooding um, due to high tides or coastal flooding or from st uh, storms. The Jamaica Bay Community Flood Watch Program is run by the Science and Resilience Institute, a consortium of institutions, including CUNY, that was formed in response to Superstorm Sandy. Hurricane Sandy was the big story and the, is the story for many residents. And so the more we can understand about the frequency, the better we can be prepared of what flooding would look like in the future. At the end of Old Howard Beach is Hamilton Beach, a tiny outlying peninsula community with only one road in and one road out. Roger Gendron leads the local civic group. He tried using Facebook before Sandy to keep neighbors up to date on flood info, but it took a superstorm to send the community a wake up call. When Sandy hit in October of 2012, I had 22 members on my civic page. I currently have almost 900 on the civic page. Nearly the entire community had to be rebuilt after Superstorm Sandy, so it wasn't hard to get folks like Roger to participate. In fact, it's as easy as taking a picture on your cell phone. Well, if you have an immovable object in front of your house, telephone pole, a fire hydrant, anything, go out there and put a mark on it with tape or paint, six inches, 12 inches, two feet, three feet. Because then when you take a picture, if that is in that picture, then you have a good reference. Then you know oh, there's a six inch mark, the water is six inches in the street. But in a community that has complained to City Hall about flooding issues since long before the superstorm, there can be some cynicism about participating in the program. It's that old, my vote doesn't count, my voice is never heard. Well, it's wrong in this case because the photos that, that I've sent in and the residents have sent in, what they've done is they've actually enabled NOAA to kind of hone their numbers when it comes to minor, to moderate, to major coastal flooding. The goals would be to, to really share those stories and those narratives about impacts of flooding as well as improve our flood forecasts or flood models um, so that way we can be better prepared and aware of when flooding would happen and be prepared to handle it. I'm Andrew Falzone for Simply Science on CUNY TV.